What's up everybody, Fritz here. Are you thinking about getting a BMW, but you're not sure how you can afford the parts or the maintenance? Well, in today's video, we're gonna cover the first part of that, which is how to afford parts. Let's get into the video. So now that you've made the choice to go to BMW or are heavily considering it, you may have heard some disparaging claims like the maintenance is really expensive, parts are also very expensive. And I'm happy to tell you here that some of that, or most of that, is actually not true. The aftermarket scene for BMW is actually a plethora of budget as well as high performance parts. And Usually you get your money's worth when you go to these aftermarket retailers. And the other thing that you have to consider is, are these people who are telling you these things, are they BMW owners? Are they people who work on their car? Or are they people who have a very entry level job and so they don't get paid much? So a lot of things are expensive to them. That's no disrespect to anybody, but expensive is a relative term, right? And I'm gonna say that one of the ways that you can afford parts for your BMW is obviously work. Now, I know that we are in a bit of a rough time in 2020. Jobs are hard to come by, you may have been laid off. So no, I'm not encouraging anybody at all to spend your stimulus check, which is probably long gone by now, or your future potential stimulus check, if we ever get one, on BMW parts at all. Now, if it's something that is a necessity, like maintenance, like your oil changes, a flat tire, something like that, then I would say that this is the money that your paycheck should go to. But anything as far as a modification or performance enhancement, I would not recommend that you use your paycheck money, especially in these times right now for you. But if you can find a way to make extra money, this is the money that you should use to buy those kinds of parts. So whether you're currently working or looking for a job, stay tuned for the rest of this video because we're gonna go over how you can make that extra bit of cash in order to afford those parts that you need for your car, but also how you can negotiate with these brands in order to get it to a price point that is more affordable for you. Number one is gonna be great for those of you who are not working right now, but even for those of you who are working, this is still a great option, and that is becoming an independent contractor. There's gotta be some sort of skill set or abilities that you have that can help anybody out. A good example of this is becoming an Uber or a Lyft driver. The good thing about working for Uber or Lyft is that you work on your own hours, you get to pick the clients that you wanna work with, and you're essentially your own boss. This is also applicable to things like YouTube as well as Instagram. I myself am a financial consultant and am considered an independent contractor because I could work for different companies if I choose to. Now the downsides to being an independent contractor, you are not an hourly worker, so you cannot just show up to work, do nothing one day, do something another day, and get compensated for both days. You actually have to produce here. And whether it is that you're doing Uber and Lyft, YouTube, whatever it is, most of the time, your pay is negotiated up front or is on a performance basis, or it could be a combination of the two. So your clients really have to be incentivized in order to compensate you. So that means you have to do a good work with them. The other downside here is that usually the initial startup cost is all on you. Normally an employer will give you things like the training, the uniform, in order to get you started. But taking YouTube for example, you have to buy your own camera, you have to buy your own microphone. If you're doing Uber and Lyft, you have to get your own car, you have to get your own insurance. So the startup cost is all on you. But the great thing is that most of you are probably watching this video on a smartphone. So what you could do is if you already have your BMW, start taking pictures of it all the time. And if you're considering this path of being an independent contractor where you're going to advertise things like your car parts, your car journey, you film and take pictures of everything, before, afters, during. Instagram is good, but the attention rate, especially when it comes to cars, is not all there. It's not exactly where people go to when it comes to looking at DIYs, but it's a great place to advertise for your YouTube channel. But if you're looking to just get started, this is a great place to start because most of you, like I said, have a phone. You can start taking pictures right away. Start posting every other day at the very least and work your way up to daily posts. If you're doing this on YouTube, start by doing one video a week and then six videos a month and then try to get it to two times in a week. This is actually the first thing that you're gonna have to do before reaching out to any brands because you have to build an audience. You have to build a body of work that's going to incentivize them to incentivize you. YouTube sets its partner program for 1,000 subscribers and 4,000 watch hours in a year. And that's a really good basis. If you're starting to get monetized on YouTube, 
now's a good time for you to start reaching out to brands. If you unlock the additional features in Instagram, such as the swipe up feature in the stories, then I think that you're at a good point to start reaching out to brands when it comes to posting things on Instagram because when they do that swipe up function, it can take them directly to a manufacturer's website or a brand's website, whatever it may be. Now that we've went over how you can be an independent contractor and start making that extra money, let's head upstairs in my office where I can go over some of the examples of how I reached out to certain brands as well as the shops in my area in order to work out some sort of deal that benefits the both of us. Let's go. So now that I've got you thinking about becoming an independent contractor and managing your own side business, how do you reach out to brands? Well, in the beginning, you don't. What you do is you go through the regular buying process as a regular customer, and then as soon as you're done with the final project, whether you're making a video or taking some really good Instagram pictures, send those pictures or videos directly over to the manufacturer. Let them know, hey, I got the product in, thank you for the instructions, and I'm really liking it right now or let them know about any issues that you're having. This is gonna really build a lot of trust between you and the brands out there because what could happen is that this brand says, wow, this is actually really good work here. We have some additional products that we would like for you to check out. Do you mind doing a video on each of these? Of course, your answer is gonna be yes. Usually they're gonna give you these products at a discounted rate or even for free. Now I will caution you guys, there are some scams out there, so make sure that these are verified products and companies that you're gonna get parts from. Don't be giving away your address, your social security number, and your date of birth to these companies. They don't need that. All that they really need is your mailing address as well as your name. And because this video is really catered to making BMW parts more affordable, we're gonna be going through the analogy of becoming a BMW content creator. In the beginning, you're gonna definitely wanna create an Instagram or a YouTube channel that is catered just to your BMW then just think of a catchy name that you would like, something that is going to scale up for you and not something that is so restrictive that you have to keep it within that. Say for example is my BMW is an F22. What happens if I get a different car? What happens if these brands want me to do installation videos on another car that is not an F22? It doesn't necessarily fit, right? That's exactly why I came up with the name VroomTuber because cars go vroom, especially BMWs, and I put videos on YouTube. So this allows me to have that lateral capability of working on one BMW or another. And just know that not every brand is going to give you additional parts or discounts whenever you reach out to them, even if you've made a video or made a lot of good pictures on their behalf. But this is also gonna be good for you to go through the normal customer buying process because if they have terrible customer service or excellent customer service, this is gonna be something that you want to let your followers and subscribers know when you put out the content. You do not want to incentivize any companies that are doing any wrongdoings or giving terrible customer service. And don't forget to record everything. Even something so routine as changing out the cabin filter, doing an oil change, even buying tires at a tire shop. Because in the beginning, you're gonna be really new to making videos. You're gonna be really new to taking pictures. And if you have a shop where they're gonna do the tire installation for you, then you can operate the camera from behind the scenes versus you having to try to take a picture and take the video with you in front of the camera, not having the controls right in front of you. That is a challenging process as well. So. Take every chance that you get to learn how your camera and your microphone work. If there's one thing I can really suggest, get a really good microphone. And continue down that path until you build up a large enough audience. Again, on YouTube, it's gonna be when you start getting paid through ads because you have 1,000 subscribers and 4,000 watch hours. If you're gonna be on Instagram, wait until you get the additional features like the swipe up feature in the stories. Once you have this, you can start reaching out to places like shops in the area. And I would recommend that you give them a call first. Say, hey, a buddy of mine recommended me to you and this is what I need done. Get your time scheduled in and then at the end say, hey, you know what? I also should have mentioned I make videos or I take photos for Instagram and I would like to record and shoot the process that you guys are going to do on my car while it's there. And then try to squeeze one more thing in there and say, hey, if you're open to it, do you mind if I send you the body of work that I have once I'm done? And if you like what I have to present, could we discuss a partnership? 
If they say no, take your car somewhere else. As soon as you're done, make sure to finish your project in a timely manner. And even when you go to the shop, say, hey, because this is a really big project that you guys are gonna do on the car, I think I have to break this up into three videos. Here's a schedule that I foresee it coming out in. Boom, 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 boom. That's exactly what I did when I had to do my lower control arms, thrust arms, and alignment when I took it to SV Bimmer. This is the exact process that I used. For a time, we were going back and forth through emails about how we could help each other out. Finally, it was up to me to make the first draft of the proposal that you guys can see right over here. If you want to read the full proposal, go ahead and pause the video here, but the structure is going to remain consistent for every proposal that you should send to a brand or a business. At the top, saying, hey, this is who I am, this is the content that I currently cover, this is the content that I would like to cover in the future, and this is my current growth rate right now on this platform. And this is what's so good about YouTube and Instagram, is that they give you all of these analytics for free. So this is something that you can make very transparent to the people that you're making proposals to. The actual proposal is going to start with incentives for the shop, followed by incentives for the followers and subscribers that I would send over to the shop. Following through with some numbers as well, the numbers, they don't have to be an exact science, and let the person know, hey, these are just some numbers that I'm just drawing up, we can always discuss numbers later. But just so that you have something on paper here, put some numbers down. The last two bullet points that I have here are actually benefits for myself, but tie heavily into the shop. I wanna let the shop know that I am making videos as well as other content on my car. So if I schedule an appointment at the shop, I need to make sure that my appointment will stick. I won't get bumped for anybody else. Or if I need some sort of emergency work done, I can squeeze my way in whenever possible or potentially you know, get an expedited appointment. Lastly, if I'm going to receive any kind of discount here, I want to make sure that I'm benefiting the shop because it makes no sense to get a benefit from the shop if I'm not benefiting them. So my proposal here was for every $1,000 that I garnished for the shop, I would receive 10% off. So $2,000, I would get 20% off and so on and so forth. But again, the numbers are relevant here. You just want to put something down on paper. You guys will negotiate numbers later. You just want to make sure that the context of the contract of the negotiation is all in. Now, this isn't the final proposal that we actually laid down and agreed upon, but it was something to get us started. Again, we want to make sure that we're giving the most benefit to the brand and then getting a little bit for ourselves as well, but also incentivizing our followers and subscribers to go through this company as well. And this is the exact process that I've been going through for all the parts that I've gotten on my BMW so far. Going through Amazon is great, especially when you install the web browser Honey, because it makes sure that you're getting all the parts or everything that you buy from Amazon at the lowest price. You can also go through Amazon affiliate links in order to start generating some sort of revenue right away because YouTube won't give you ad revenue right away. But if people start buying things from your Amazon affiliate links, you can start getting money right away. If you reach out to brands after you've done the install as your channel is still growing, they're more likely to give you things or give you discounts on future products later on. And then once you've built up your audience, you can start reaching out to shops and start negotiating contracts as the one that I laid out for you. But if I missed out on anything, please let me know down in the comment section below. If you found this video helpful, please leave a like and subscribe. Don't forget, the link for the merch is gonna be down in the description as well. And I'll see you guys in the next one.